In our last Godot versus Unity performance comparison, we looked at relative 3D physics performance and the various optimizations that are available for both engines, namely a standalone physics server for Godot and DOTS physics for Unity. Well, if you haven't yet watched my last videos on 3D performance, go watch them now. But Godot was a little bit slower in 3D physics. <coughs> Alright, a lot slower in 3D physics. But wait, you say. I've received dozens of emails from you asking to compare Unity 2D to Godot 2D in physics performance. Many of you stating that Godot is better optimized for 2D games in physics than Unity. Is this really true? In this video, we are going to compare the 2D physics performance between Unity and Godot. 2D performance in a game engine is often overshadowed by 3D performance, but there are many game genres where 2D physics performance is critical. Many indie games take the 2D route rather than dealing with 3D. A popular genre are bullet hell games. At any given time, you may have several hundred or even in some cases, thousands of 2D physics objects on screen at once. Sometimes they need to collide with each other, and at other times we only care about collisions between the bullets and the player or objects in the scene. Regardless, we are going to push both Godot and Unity to its breaking point and find out how many simultaneous 2D physics objects and interactions each engine can handle before breaking down. So the first thing we need to do is set the Godot physics frame rate to 50 hertz to match Unity's fixed physics time step so that we can have an apple to apples comparison. And we're off. We are running a 50 hertz physics frame rate with no optimizations. All the physics objects are instantiated as nodes on the scene tree and no special considerations for batching the draw calls are being made. This is the simplest and most naive implementation that one could write. Let's see how many 2D physics objects Godot can handle before dropping below 10 FPS. And at 50 Hertz, Godot was able to handle 1,517 objects on screen. But you may have noticed a problem. If we zoom in, it becomes obvious that there's a lot of interpenetration between the objects. What's going on? On GitHub, we find issue 2092, which identifies the problem Godot has with overlapping and shaking rigid body 2Ds at low physics frame rates. One of the workarounds offered was setting the physics rate to 180 hertz. I found other commenters who said that most of the interpenetration went away at 140 hertz and above, with the downside being higher CPU usage to maintain such a frame rate. I found that setting the physics rate to 100 hertz fixed most of the jittering for me. So let's try it again at 100 hertz. And here we are at 120 hertz with no optimizations. I've also lowered the time between spawns to speed things up a bit. Let's see how many 2D boxes Godot can handle with no special optimizations before it breaks down. And finally Godot breaks down and drops below 15 FPS at 1822 boxes. But can we do better? Just notice all those nodes being placed on the scene tree. We potentially have overhead from thousands of nodes. Could this be slowing things down? 
Let's try using a physics server to handle the 2D physics objects without having to have the nodes populate the scene tree. While we're at it, let's use multi meshes to optimize the draw calls. The Godot documentation even suggests that when handling large numbers of 2D rigid bodies, you should consider using a physics 2D server to optimize your game. Here we are running the physics 2D server version with multi-threaded 2D physics and multi-meshes drawing the sprites. This should give us the best case performance figures so that we can compare with Unity. And we drop below 15 FPS at 1,993 boxes. We gained about 170 more physics objects on screen with our performance optimizations. For completeness, let's see what effect, if any, a circle collision shape has on the performance when compared to a rectangle shape using the same optimizations in Godot. And we can clearly see that a circle collision shape barely has any performance ramifications, managing 1952 objects versus 1993 for a rectangle shape. Now let's compare this to Unity. So let's recap where we are right now. Godot uses a proprietary physics engine known as Godot Physics for 2D collisions. We found that at physics rates less than 120 Hz, there's an issue with having large stacks of physics objects in Godot that causes interpenetration and a performance drop. We had to raise the physics rate to 120 Hz to work around this issue in Godot at the cost of some more CPU cycles. We also saw that the overhead of the nodes in the scene tree in Godot has a minimal but measurable impact on performance. By rewriting the code to use a physics server and multi-meshes, we gain a little less than 10% in performance. In our benchmark, Godot is able to simultaneously display 1729 boxes at 50 Hz and 1993 boxes at 120 Hz physics rates. It's likely the lower performance we see at 50 Hz is due to all the interpenetrations caused by an issue with Godot physics. Before we take a look at Unity, pause the video and write your predictions in the comments below. Unity was able to outperform Godot in 3D physics by an order of magnitude. Do you think the same will hold for 2D? Will box 2D physics in Unity outperform Godot physics in 2D? If so, by how much? Comment below. So here is Unity at 50 Hz. Immediately, you can notice that Box 2D does not suffer from the same interpenetration issue at lower physics rates that Godot does. In the end, at 50 Hz, Unity is able to manage 1895 physics objects, 166 more than Godot, but the boxes appear a bit squishy at this low physics rate. Let's push it to 120 Hz and see how Unity does. And amazingly, Unity struggles much more than Godot at 120 Hz and eventually taps out at 1,150 physics objects. This is 843 fewer 2D physics objects than Godot is able to handle. Incredible! Are these the results you expected? And here are all four benchmark runs simultaneously. On the top row, we have the 50 Hz runs with Godot on the left and Unity on the right. And the bottom row are the 120 Hz runs with Godot again on the left and Unity on the right. What's immediately noticeable is the bug that affects the Godot 50 Hz run. I wonder how much faster Godot at 50 Hz would be if this bug were fixed. Fortunately, the GitHub issue has it slated to be fixed in Godot 4.0. Let's hope it gets backported into Godot 3. Here are the final results. Godot is almost 60% faster than Unity at 120 Hz physics frame rates. Unfortunately, due to a bug in Godot Physics 2D, our 50 Hz results are worse than otherwise expected. 
I would expect Godot to significantly outperform Unity at 50 Hz in scenarios where large amounts of physics objects are not stacked on top of each other. This means most bullet hell type games could benefit from a lower physics frame rate in Godot without having to worry about the bug while performing better than Unity. I hope you enjoyed this quick dive into 2D physics performance on these two awesome game engines. If so, please like and subscribe so I can keep developing new content for you.